Running into main mode. I'm going to show you how to run into main mode, which lets you share configuration between multiple server instances. Domain file contains the server profiles which we talked about in the standalone profile. The difference is that you can run the servers in server groups. You assign those server groups to a profile. If we have a look at the host file, it contains multiple servers which belong to a server group. If we start up a domain on this host, then we can see that multiple server processes are started. If we run the Java process in the background and then use the ps command to view the Java processes that were running, we can see there are four running. They are the process controller, which controls the Java processes on this machine. The host controller, which controls the domain. In this case, this host controller is the master and two server instances, server one and two. So that's useful if you want to manage two servers running on the same host. There's also a host master and host slave example configuration files for if you want to run a domain controller on a separate machine and a slave controller on another machine. So in this case, I'm going to show you the host master, which is the master of the domain. It connects to a host controller on the local machine, which makes it the master. If we have a look at the domain controller section of the slave, then it, we can see that it points to the other host, the remote host. So it's a slave and the remote host is the master of the domain. It also contains two server definitions, which use the main and other server groups defined in the domain XML file, which it reads from the remote host. So now we're going to run the domain and pass it the host config for host master and give it a management bind address of its external NIC so that the slave controller can connect into it. If when we start the master this time, we'll see that the management interface 9999 is bound to an external NIC. That means our slave controller will be able to connect into it. So let's review the server processes that are running this time. There's a process controller which controls the processes and a host controller on this machine. So let's go to the remote host. If we have a look at the host slave XML configuration file, you can see where I've added the user host1 and its password. This is so it can authenticate to the domain master. The password is base64 encoded. You also have to add a section to the remote tag in domain controller, which is the security realm that you wish to use. So let's run the slave node. And I'm going to tell it which configuration I want to use, the host slave, and tell it the master address is the remote host. And after we start this server process, if we review the processes that are running using the ps command again, we can see that there are four processes running, a process controller, a host controller, and two server nodes. So that's how to run in domain mode.